Hi, this is Thomas with Believe and Run. This is Robbie with Believe and Run. And Robbie, we're always geeked up and anticipating things all the time. Super geeked up. Like, what was the last thing that you waited for that you were, oh, oh my, look at that, he's got goggles. goggles on, geek goggles. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming. Uh, maybe let's just get into it. Let's do it. Do you want to lead off with a banger? I always like leading off with a banger. <laughs> Let's start off with uh, a big one that's coming quite soon, actually. This yeah. one's coming out in February. This colorway in particular comes out in March. I was just gonna ask you, but that colorway comes out separately. Yeah, this is the Kakazome. Kakazome! Colorway. Kakazome? Yeah, we've already actually reviewed this. We have a video review up and a written review. Uh, this is uh, Mizuno's newest race day shoe and it's something right Tom? I do think if people are going to get excited and you want to start marking a calendar for stuff that you want to get excited about this guy's got to be on your list it's something special. It has a reported stack height of 40 millimeters in the heel and I forget what it is in the forefoot but you can see they kind of toyed around with the world athletics uh Let's just say it's very creative the way that they got around it to give you some extra cushioning underfoot. Yeah, so we got this huge slab. It goes up to, I think, around 50 millimeters right here. Mm. And it's uh, we got two, two layers of foam, actually. It's their Energy Light Pro foam on top and uh, Energy Light on the bottom with a plate here in the middle. So It's really hard to tell what the difference is, but I feel like the Energy Light Pro is just a little bouncier, a little bit more yeah. like a rubber ball than the uh, stuff underneath. So sometimes when we're reviewing shoes, I'll, I'll have used a race day shoe or a fast day shoe, and Robbie hasn't used it for the same thing that I've used it for, but in this case, we both run intervals in this, we've run long miles in it. Yeah. We both have really gotten into this shoe. We really liked it. What's the one drawback that we both had? The only drawback is the toe box is very tight, uh, even though it feels like it fits properly throughout the midfoot and everywhere else. Be careful with the toe box. I, we both had some, some issues. With I would it. say after our run, our big toes were kind of giving us a little bit of feedback that was yeah. not so positive. Anyways, this comes out in March, as I said, this colorway for $250. Again, we don't have a lot of these shoes, so we're gonna just talk about, we've seen them in person at the Held running them. event. Some of them slid onto my foot. Yeah, let's talk about this one. This is coming out very soon, next month actually, and they kept this under wraps for a long time. We've seen pictures, you've probably seen pictures on Instagram. Saucony Endorphin Elite. Yeah, I mean, is this the one that kind of looks like a sandal? It is, the Hirachi sandal. Yeah. Style. Yeah. All right, so the Endorphin Elite features a new foam from Saucony, the Poweron HG. What does the HG stand for, do we know? I don't know, I think it may be hydrogen. Ah. I think I've seen that somewhere. I like that. So it's like hydrogen infused, which sounds cool. Yeah, it's like the Hindenburg, right? Yeah, so it's supposed to, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I heard, and I haven't tried this shoe okay. on myself. I haven't even, this one I haven't gripped. You may saw it at the party yeah. when we were out in Texas, but I heard it's a little firmer than you might expect. Yeah, I mean, I think I saw it somewhere too, so I guess we'll be getting our pairs in the next week or two. Maybe by the time this video comes out, we might even have them. But it is pretty light, 7.2 ounces for men's size nine. I mean, that is- I love a light shoe. Yeah. And With that much stack? Mm -hmm, 40 millimeter stack height, has a power on PB sock liner. Wait a second, this one's 40 millimeters? I thought it was above. Uh, no, this is 40, yeah, it's so race it's, ready. It's race ready, yeah. wow, okay. Yep, and uh, it's just, I think it's gonna be, I don't know, we'll see, but I think there's a lot of promising things. What'll be interesting about this is you have the pro, Endorphin mm -hmm. Pro 3 yep. that we loved. I think we gave it shoe of the year last year Yeah, uh, for race day. And then you have this shoe, which has the 40 millimeters of stack. It's got this new foam, crazy look, super light. It's gonna be lighter than the Pro 3. So part of the whole thing is that Saucony's celebrating their 125th anniversary. So I think it's this shoe to kind of celebrate that. That's kind of what they're basing it around. So it might just be a one-off shoe that they're doing for this year. Mm. I don't know, I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. All right, cool. What else you got? All right, one of our favorite daily trainers of last year, maybe recovery style shoe, I don't know. But we did see people when we were in New York running the full marathon in this year. Yeah, the New Balance SC Trainer. And we, that might be the shoe I've logged the most miles on from last year. Let's be real, when we came down to voting for our favorite daily trainer of the year, Robbie, it was a tough call between the Nova Blast 3 
and the SE trainer. Yeah, again, the SE trainer it had it was heavier, had a 47 millimeter stack head in the heel, but provided, but it had a full length carbon fiber plate. Kind of just an interesting new experience. Also, the fuel cell in that shoe really had nice energy return paired with that energy arc plate. Yeah. So, so now yeah. we have version two coming out, and uh, version two is coming in July for same price, hundred eighty dollars. But are we nervous? I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I'm excited, but I'm nervous. Well, one of the great things about the SE trainers that had this huge stack of that fuel cell foam. Yeah. And it was actually a legal shoe. Yeah. And now it's gonna lose an ounce, but it also loses eight millimeters of stack height. So now it's 39 millimeters, uh, 33 in the forefoot. And part of that scares me a little bit because of course we always like things to be a little bit lighter, but is it gonna lose its magic? Here's where I'm thinking maybe it might not. All right. So we ran in the Elite Three. It's nice, but there isn't that much cushioning underfoot. Right. Like when you compare it to say, the SE trainer or some of the other shoes that are coming out, this gives you an option if you're like, look, I'm not gonna be getting an OTQ, but I really wanna run the marathon and I really want a shoe that makes it feel good. I think it could be that shoe. But anyways, it was a great shoe. Look for the second version. Let's move on. Let's talk about maybe a shoe that isn't necessarily something that most people will be excited about. I'm talking about Skechers. Skechers Max Road 6. Okay, I, I again, need to talk about every it. Every once in a while, Robbie I need slips to talk about one it. in. I just got and it in there. This one, I'm actually more excited about some of the other shoes they have coming out, but look, Robbie, you've got a relationship with this shoe. Yeah, the Max Road 5 was probably my favorite shoe, one of my favorite shoes of 2021. So this version actually gets four millimeters of stack height, which I'm not sure that four I- Four millimeters more. Four millimeters more, yeah, uh, of it stack height. It really gets height. maxed out. It's gonna be ridiculous, but it is light. I think it. I think this version though picks up an ounce over the last year's version, which is the only thing. That was the nice thing about the Max Road Five is that it was so light and still had that cushion and roll. But I kind of feel like you're anticipating this one when you really should be anticipating the ride, the mm -hmm. Go Run Ride Eleven. Yeah, I think I had to throw that out there because that is. And they, Skechers even said that the Ride Eleven is probably going to be more of the Max Road that we've loved. Yeah. So I think I am, that's probably the one I'm most excited about. What I get geeked up about is watching us react to the shoes that we get and, and giving the feedback. So I'm actually excited to see what you think between those two shoes. Because if you mm -hmm. are like, oh, the ride is now the successor yeah. to the uh, Max Road, people get excited. And it still has, both still have that H plate. So either one of those, they're both exciting. They're coming out in the first half of 2022. I guess let's get into this because this isn't coming out till February 1st, but we've already done our video review and written review. What is this? Song? Spoiler alert, Nimbus, <laughs> Gel Nimbus 25. I think I have over 60 miles in it so far. It was a very soft shoe in the beginning. I feel mm -hmm. like it's broken in, kind of just like finding its sweet spot now. It's got a very wide platform. So even though it's really soft and it's got a high stack of over 40 millimeters, I think it's 41 and a half. And they added six more millimeters of foam on the front. It doesn't bottom out like the previous version did. It For feels sure. nice and soft. And with that wide base, it's stable. But Robbie, what's one of the stars of this shoe? Are we talking about the tongue? I'll, I'll throw the tongue, but just the upper in the general. The upper in general, yeah. Super comfortable, just comfort all around. I mean, it is on the heavier side because you get all that plushness and wraps your foot. But it is, it's but it didn't ridiculous. feel that heavy to me because I think I mean, it's integrated. It's not one of those shoes that has the bottom heavy feel. I think for size nine, it's 10.2 ounces. It's the same as weight as last year's Nimbus, mm -hmm. so it's not anything ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great long run shoe. I took it out for 60 miles on Tuesday, and I was surprised my legs felt great the next day. Yeah. No issues at all, so. This is definitely in the Max Kush category now. It's gonna compete with your Bondi, with your More V4 from New Balance. This is a soft, comfy shoe that is built to gobble up miles. Yep, and again, comes out February 1st for $160. All right, so next we're gonna talk about a couple of shoes again that we haven't received yet. We, I don't even, we don't even know the exact timelines when they're coming out. Nike, Vaporfly, Next% 3, uh, everyone's excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be one of those shoes when it eventually pops off, you're gonna have to be waiting by your computer to <laughs> make sure you can hit the buy button. And then I feel like it'll be more available. One thing I'm not looking forward to is I've heard that the Zoom X 
is firmer. And when we held it in our hands when we're doing that Charmin test, uh, squeezing it, yeah, it did feel like a little firmer. And we don't have the weights or anything on that. Now the the upper is a little bit different that we've seen from the past <clears throat> past Vaporfy. So it seems to be a little bit more breathable, maybe more of a open open mesh upper, I guess. Yeah. Of course, it's still gonna be exciting. We're gonna review it. We're gonna probably love it still. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to love that shoe. They, it's built, they test it on the athletes. Like we sometimes get into how we feel about shoes, but one of the most tested shoes out there is the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. Yeah. And I can tell you, we can't reveal our sources, but those shoes are two of the most efficient shoes on the market to this day. So it's not just our opinion that they're fast day shoes, they've been proven in labs to be at yeah. the pinnacle. Speaking of Nike, I guess we should roll into the Vomero 17. See, the Vomero is one of those shoes that some people love, some people don't. It's kind of shifted in purpose throughout its history. Even the last version, I really liked the way, it, the ride of it, but I did not like the look of it. We saw the Vomero 17, and it's something special. What's so special about this shoe, Thomas? For all those people that are out there saying, please give me the Turbo, which was a slab of Zoom X with a slab of React, very nice light package. Well, guess what? You're gonna get treated to basically that setup in the Bomero, but just more of it. I mean, that's pretty exciting because I, we've long uh, rest in peace the Turbo wanting it to come back from the dead for some reason it hasn't yet. Having those two, the Zoom X React combo and a shoe back at us again, wrapped in the Vomero package, I mean, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, so. I mean, that's their premium daily trainer. It's supposed to be their premium daily trainer. And I think what this finally does, you have the pe Pegasus, which is your basic daily trainer from mm -hmm. Nike. This takes a Vomero where it was kind of like slightly different and just a different ride, maybe softer, more cushion than the Pegasus. And this just takes it and says, this is your premier daily trainer. And it just, it looks good. The foams look great. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I think it's gonna turn on a lot of people who missed the turbo. All right, so this is another one coming soon uh, in February. It's weird though, because it was on sale so that they could get the, you know, how they do that? Yeah, they get the World Athletics approval, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. Of course, the one came out slash didn't come out a couple years ago. It took a <laughs> while for it to actually get into people's uh, hands. And now we're moving on to the second version, which it seems kind of the same in some ways. I think the midsole and outsole are generally the same. I think that thing that I really wanted from it has changed. Which is? The what? bounce off the toe. They put in more foam under the foot. They move the plate around a little bit. I think we're gonna get that bouncy pop that we've been well, like looking for. Yeah, so they actually put in a whole different design plate in here. So it's more, it's just a single plate with more of a spoon style for a more aggressive toe off, which is definitely something that that shoe needed. I it, felt like it was a light shoe that you wanted to turn up the gas in when you were going and it just, yeah, it didn't. It was like, you know, when you had, you had a, a Volkswagen Fox, I had a Volkswagen Fox. <laughs> if you're on the freeway and you needed to, to pass somebody, you'd slam yeah. down that gas and it just wouldn't pull up. Yeah, you run out of gears in that thing. Yeah, and I felt like that was the original DV8 uh, Elite. So I'm really excited for this one. So, and it's only $200, that's the nice thing there. Whoa. Yeah, it comes in a lot lower than the other carbon plate erased issues. I do think there's gonna be more production, less issues, and there's gonna be more ways for you to buy Puma this year because they're going into a lot more brick and mortars. Yeah, so look out for that. All right, here's an interesting one that, I don't know, we weren't that excited about before, but let's talk about Kraft. Okay, the first try with the Kraft shoes, the foam was heavy. They had a slab of rubber on it that was heavy, big chunky nugs. The upper was... The upper, yeah, it just didn't <laughs> didn't fit. But it looks like they're making progress on this next, is it second or third round of this generation? The foams are getting lighter. Yeah, so Kraft seems to be pretty focused on creating some, you know, adjusting some of the issues with the CTM Ultra Carbon and kind of making a diverse array of shoes for road and trail and kind of like almost like a hybrid of road trail seems to be mm -hmm. their thing. So they're like the gravel bike of shoes. They really are. So one of the like, more exciting models that's coming from them is the Nordlight Speed. 
Uh, so that's coming in February for $235. That's the only thing is that the price Prices points are, are still like up really there. up there. The Norlite Speed is actually one of their road shoes and that's gonna have a carbon fiber plate in it. It has their like, nitrogen infused foam. What it's supposed to be a, one of their most durable shoes that just lasts for hundreds of miles. I do think that is one thing about their shoes and we talk about the price point a little bit. The shoe's pretty indestructible. That I think that's the thing, the construction of them, the time and effort that they put into making sure that design and everything else is there is definitely on point. That shoe is, it's like mid-range, nine and a half ounce. It's not like really race shoe, but also like in between that daily trainer. And from what we saw at the running event, the designs themselves look really good. So you can get anything if you want from the paint splattered look to yeah. more of a monochromatic and they look pretty tight. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be a good for year for them, especially they seem to be putting a lot of effort into their lines. Uh, there's some trail models as well that are super exciting. So I think Kraft, you're in the right direction. It's exciting to see what you're doing. We're gonna get into some of the very exciting things in a second where we're, that we're gonna mention. But I also wanna mention like there are some companies that we're excited about, maybe not like falling to that top tier, but I feel like Under Armour starting to turn a corner some of the things we've seen with them, like the uh, Flow Velocity Elite, it's starting to get there and we're just like... We're, we're like, please keep it coming. Yeah, Solomon going into the road segment with some max cushion stuff. Keep an eye out for those as well. But let's get into some of the secret shoes mm. and uh, we're not allowed to show. Uh, in fact- Yeah, we can't even show you the pictures. You're just gonna have to listen to us. One that I think we should talk about. What about the Adidas Boston 12? I'm so hopeful for it. It looks like they've addressed some of the issues that we had. You've got more Light Strike Pro, you've got less Light Strike. Yeah, and it seems like that- Slimmer package. Yeah, I think some of the changes that we were hoping to see that when they destroyed it in the 11 or whatever, like I think they've kind of dialed back and are making it more that, trying to make it more that faster day shoe. Yeah. I think we're excited about that. Another shoe that I threw on the list, Hoka Mach X. Yeah, of course we're excited about yeah, it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Because the Hoka Mach 4 uh, or Mach 5 was one of our favorite just like lightweight daily trainers of last year, temperatures. And if you don't know, when you put it, Hoka puts an X in it, it's a carbon plate. So we're interested to see that. And it'll also be interesting to see how that plays along with the Rocket X. Yeah. Which another shoe that which we didn't for some, put on there. I had it on the list and then some, I must have deleted it by accident. <laughs> so the Hoka Rocket X2 should have been up there with the other ones. That's another one that we're really excited about. Finally, it seems like Hoka's actually made- A competitive race day shoe. I believe at the $250 price points. So that's another one that we're incredibly excited about. I mean, it's really exciting when you're gonna have that many super shoes to choose from that you're gonna be able to find the right fit, the right feel, a shoe that hits in the spot that you want it to for race day, where before you were like, I just gotta stick it in a vapor fly and that's it. Yeah, and I mean, Hoka is like, we've been praying for this day to come, so it's finally nice that they have a legitimate road racer. I think they might have been the last to the market with one, I don't know. Two other ones that we're excited about, one that we've already shown and seen, and another one in the same family is the Kanvara Pro and the Kanvara 14. Now, depending on what you want out of a shoe, if you want the traditional Kambara, I think you're gonna to wanna to go stick with the Kambara 14. Yeah, which they seem to have improved a little bit higher stack height. Uh, it's power run midsole, stays at like seven ounces, very light as the Kambara always is. It's gonna have that light snappy feel that you're used to. When my legs were younger, I yeah. really love the Kambara. As I get older, I'm really more getting excited about the Kambara Pro. Yeah, so the Kambara Pro is a crazy one, uh, obviously we'll show a picture of it. So the regular Kambara was built out of, like it came out of that born to run, minimalist shoe, dropping stuff that's not needed. It was a super lightweight shoe. They got rid of outsole rubber. It was really basic. Don't tell me about why. the Kambara Pro <laughs> and tell me how it's right. related. So the Kambara Pro, I guess it's related in that it's also lightweight, but the Kambara Pro is a crazy looking shoe. It has 42 millimeter stack height in the heel. Uh, what is it, 34 in the four foot eight millimeter drop. It's big looking, but it's light. It's like nine ounces for size nine. It's like Kanvara on steroids, Kanvara that- That's more like it's like a Hulk version of the, the Kanvara. The Stung Bee yeah. uh, version. Or did you see that movie with Stung Will Bee Smith Beasting. where he eats uh, oh, yeah. shell, shell, shellfish? And is that Hitch? Yeah, that's Hitch. Oh, okay. I was gonna make a joke about him getting punched, but he wasn't the one that got punched. No, he's a punchier. So Robbie, 
This thing's got this kitchen sink. Yeah. Like, really tell me about this midsole. Well, it has a top layer of Power Run PB. It has a carbon plate running in it. It has, what was the bottom of it? Is it Power Run? Yeah, Power, Power Run, Run Plus. Plus. Yeah. Lots of stuff going on in there, which I think sometimes when you combine all those things, it just maybe doesn't work. It could be exciting. Like, it could be, like, oh. if you think about, like, the turbo with the React on the bottom and the, you know, the Zoom X on top. This could be like that, but then the plate. So it's an exciting shoe, definitely exciting. It's, if not, just because it's crazy looking. When we get excited and when we say most anticipated shoes, some of these shoes were like, I can't wait to try that shoe. Exactly. And you can try that when it comes out in August 2023 for $180. Mm. All right, last one. We mentioned it before, maybe briefly, but we're gonna mention it again. Tom, I know you want to say it. So. Oh, this is my favorite thing that I saw at the running event this year. I tried it on my foot. I ran around in it. And I have to say, this it, this might end my review <laughs> days because once I get this shoe, I might just be like, this is the shoe. Yeah, so that's the Adidas Prime X Strong 2. Two. And you love the Prime X Strong from this past year, which like you like the Prime X, but the Strong version. I did not like the Prime X. That's right. You, but the Strong version changed it for you. Yeah. So when I got the first Prime X, it wasn't really a fan. It wasn't stable. I, I think you went on a run with me where I twist my ankle like three times. Yeah. You look, you look like you're just born out of a womb of a. I was doing the baby deer stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like it was. <laughs> when the Prime X Strong came out, I was like, oh, this fixes the problem. It held my foot over that giant slab of Light Strike Pro and it just felt good. I did a race in it and just, oh, I just bounced my whole way to the finish. And then I didn't think it could get much better, but then Adidas said, screw it. Yeah, and I guess, I don't know how much we can divulge of the Primex Strong 2, but let us just say we both tried it on at the running event and it was like a size too big for me. And a size too small for me. But it was, <laughs> it's gonna change running. It like, is. it's going to. And not only that, we can't really tell you about the secret sauce in it, but let's just put it this way. Adidas said, hey, here's the rules. Screw it. <laughs> yeah, like they really are just did things that, I don't know, I didn't think could be done in running shoes, but I'm, I'm it's wondering gonna be wild. if it's so, it's so good, I'm kind of wondering if even amateurs are gonna be told, hey, they're gonna you be. You can't be wearing that. I think there might need to be some rules made. We'll see. I don't know. I'm, I hope to get it on and run a marathon in it before <laughs> the rules are made. Because yeah. man, it's yeah. something. Supposedly, it is coming out late 2023 for $300. So it's if you want to get that extra sauce, start saving. Yeah, yeah. Just start <laughs> putting away a like a layaway plan yeah, right now. Yeah, one less call to Uber Eats. <laughs> I think that wraps up our most exciting shoes of 2023. There might've been one or two that we forgot on there. Uh, I, think I mean, gonna... there, there's also like, you mentioned a couple brands, like On has some stuff. You, I know we've been harsh on On in the past and we finally got this year some that we love. They got some stuff that I'm pretty excited about too, but oh, yeah. we can't really talk about it. Yeah, they definitely are trending more in a direction that's more performance running than they have been known for. So that's, I'm very excited to see uh, what's coming for them. Mizuno, again, we love this shoe. We think there's a lot of cool stuff coming from them in the future. We're hoping that in two to three years, it's gonna really yeah. kind of do what ASICs did over the last two, three years. And that's, that's the, the whole thing. I think that ASICs is now has put down a blueprint for these companies that are like, fit, like fumbling the ball and don't know where to go with their stuff. ASICs went from being a shoe that like, we dreaded reviewing to now. We, we love it, can't wait. Like we said, the Nimbus 25 is great. Uh, Super Blast was a banger. Nova Blast 3 is like knocking it out of the park. Your favorite uh, race day shoe. I mean, Super Blast, I think, crept up to maybe our favorite ASIC shoe from last year. It did, and it, I, I, we get the caveat, Robbie and I made a new rule <laughs> that if it happened after we named the shoes for, for the, the year. The best shoes of the year. That it yeah. still could be a contender for 2023. Yeah, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Or tell us what you're most excited yeah, about. Yeah, actually, we'd love to know what you're most excited about. But anyway, stick around. We're gonna do a trail roundup as well. And um, yeah, enjoy 2023. Yeah, thanks for checking in to hear about our excitement. Make sure you follow us on all our channels. Please subscribe and like this video. Again, comment below. Uh, go to Instagram, our Strava group. Listen to the podcast, The Drop and Fuel for the Soul. And um, yeah. You nailed it. 
All right. Thank Got you. everything. <laughs> Boop. Give us a thumbs up. What are some of the things that you get like really excited for? Um, let's see. Next season of Stranger Things, uh, pizza in general, and then Super Shoes. Super Shoes. Which doesn't have to be a race day shoe, but oftentimes it is. I mean, yeah. Does a zebra have black? white stripes or black stripes? Is it white with black stripes or black with white stripes? I mean, I always go with black because when you're a kid and you have a pencil, yeah. you need to color in the stripes. I believe it. All, All right. right. Let's get a So side. let's roll on. Let's get you, a zoologist on If that. you know, you can leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right.